In this video, we're going to be talking about heat pumps in cold climates and what you should know when considering a heat pump and whether or not it's going to work in your climate. And at the end of this video, there'll be a link to another video that talks about the Daikin Fit Enhanced or the DZ6 VE, which I'll explain more in that video. But basically, that's one of our favorite heat pumps. It's a cold climate heat pump. It qualifies for a lot of the cold climate heat pump tax credits that are available now with the Inflation Reduction Act. It's also an inverter. It's extremely quiet and it's extremely efficient. And that's why we like that system but that video will be linked at the end of this video so make sure you check that out if you haven't done so already and if you're tuning into this channel for the first time consider subscribing if you haven't done so already it's a free way that you can show your support if you enjoy the content that we put out and before we get started please smash that like button for the algorithm thank you for doing that now let's dive in now first off I'd like to address one of the biggest myths that we hear all the time when it comes to heat pumps and that's that heat pumps don't work in cold weather now like clockwork, anytime I make a video like this, someone will chime in in the comments and say something like, well, they don't work where I'm from and they live in Northern Canada where it's negative 40 degrees Celsius for you know weeks or months on end. Okay, maybe you're right. Maybe air source heat pumps don't work well in your climates. Geothermal heat pumps might, depending on the circumstances. But the bottom line is, is 99% of scenarios, 99% of climates, there is a heat pump that will work well in your climate. And I'll explain the heat pump tax credit in this video, what a actual cold climate heat pump is, what the specifications are in order to qualify as a cold climate heat pump. And I'll explain what a heat pump is if you're just doing research for the first time and you didn't even know, you know, what a heat pump is and how they work. Uh, they're actually not a new technology at all. So it's not like you're going to be a guinea pig on some new tech trying out a cold climate heat pump. But the bottom line is that heat pumps are a great option for a lot of climates. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Now, in order to qualify as a cold climate heat pump, there's certain ratings that the heat pump has to have have in order to qualify. And this is for things like the Inflation Reduction Act tax credit, which is $2,000 on air source heat pumps. Geothermal heat pumps qualify for up to 30% of installation costs with no cap, whereas air source heat pumps are capped at 30% of installation costs up to a maximum tax credit of $2,000. But in order to qualify, they have to fit a few things or be within a few parameters. Now, number one is the COP rating, which stands for coefficient of performance, has to be a minimum of one point. 0.75 at 5 degrees Fahrenheit in order to qualify as a cold climate heat pump. And in addition, at 5 degrees Fahrenheit, that heat pump has to be operating at a minimum of its 75% rated maximum output capacity. So for example, if you have a two-ton heat pump, which is 24,000 BTUs of heating, that means that in order for it to qualify as a cold climate heat pump, that at 5 degrees Fahrenheit, it would still have to have an output of at least 18,000 BTUs. And the reason we like the Daikin Fit Enhanced is the new Daikin Fit Enhanced product is actually a cold climate heat pump or qualifies as a cold climate heat pump all the way up to four tons. So it's very efficient. It maintains high capacity at five degrees Fahrenheit and it's just an all around good bang for your buck product and that's why we install a lot of them. Now one thing I just touched on and this is where a lot of people that maybe are in extremely cold climates might say things like hey cold heat pumps don't work well in my climate. What they might be referring to is that the deration meaning the output capacity dropping in very cold temperatures is something that happens with heat pumps and if it's not rated for uh, as a cold climate heat pump it might not keep up in these temperatures and so that is something that you definitely want to be aware of making sure that you're selecting a heat pump that's rated for these low ambient conditions because if it's not, they're right. It, the heat pump wouldn't work in that situation because it's not rated for cold climates. Now, there's several manufacturers out there. Daikin makes a cold climate product, which we install. That's the Daikin Fit, the DZ6 Enhanced. And most other manufacturers make a product. Mitsubishi is another product line. But literally all of the manufacturers that are out there, or a lot of them, most of them, have a climate or a cold climate heat pump option that will keep up in very cold, low ambient temperatures. But one thing you do want to be aware of is that if it's built for a cold climate is at what temperature does capacity drop so low that it's putting out maybe half or less of its original state of capacity, in which case you need a backup source of heat. And so people that are saying heat pumps don't keep up in cold climates, that might be what they are referring to. And I'll talk a little bit more about that now and how we overcome this. Now, one of our favorite types of systems that we like to put in in cold climates is what's called a dual fuel system. 
Dual fuel systems are when you take a heat pump and you pair it with a furnace for your backup heat. The reason that it's called dual fuel is because you have electric as a source of fuel via the heat pump and then you also have natural gas or propane as a source. So you can have a traditional combustion type system for backup heat on those ultra cold nights when the heat pump isn't quite keeping up. And in environments like Colorado, for example, in Denver Metro or places like Salt Lake City, these are still great options because your furnace might run to or three or four nights a year when it's really, really cold and your heat pump just isn't keeping up and satisfying the temperature that you have it set at. And then on the rest of the nights when it might get down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Fun fact for Denver Metro, for example, the average low is 22 degrees Fahrenheit in our coldest month in January. Sure, we get nights below that and above that, but the bottom line is that's the average low. And so when the average low in your climate is something that's in the neighborhood of what a heat pump can operate in, then if you get a cold climate heat pump, it's going to be keeping up in these cold climates provided it's sized properly for the load and the ductwork in the house. And that's just something that a local contractor is going to be able to help you figure out when you're picking out a heat pump for your house and deciding whether or not it's something that works. But just keep in mind that cold climate heat pumps can keep up down to five degrees Fahrenheit. And so if someone is telling you that they won't work, I would probably get a second opinion by a few uh, reputable contractors until you find one that knows what they're talking about when it comes to cold climate heat pumps. Now, all heat pumps are not created equal. Cold climate heat pumps are going to be what's called an inverter. An inverter heat pump, when compared to a single stage or two stage heat pump, the difference is that an inverter ramps up and down along a continuum. Uh, this is similar to how a car motor works, right? Your car does not go zero miles an hour or 60 miles an hour, it goes zero to 60 miles an hour so it can go 25 35 all along the way it ramps up and down on a continuum the same is true for inverter heat pumps like the Daikin fit that I mentioned earlier because they ramp up and down along a continuum whereas a single stage heat pump is either on at hundred percent or it's off at hundred uh, percent or zero percent capacity when it's running and so when you're looking at a single stage system or a two stage system by comparison with an inverter the biggest benefit to an inverter is going to be efficiency and comfort because number one they ramp up and down more slowly. So typically they are a 30 or 40% savings in terms of comparison to their non-inverter counterparts. And remember your heat pump is just an air conditioner with a reversing valve. And so your, and technically it also has a, a defrost control board, but bottom line is the main difference in the system that reverses the flow of refrigerant is that reversing valve in conjunction with the electronics, AKA the defrost control board I just mentioned. That is what makes a heat pump a heat pump instead of just a traditional air conditioner. And those two components are what switch it from heating mode to cooling mode so that it can function as both your air conditioner and your source of heat. But the bottom line is that the majority of the heat pumps that we install, in fact, I would say 99% of the heat pumps that we install uh, in Colorado or other climates, cold climates are going to be inverters because the inverter product lines are what qualify as a cold climate heat pump. And that's what allows them to operate efficiently in these cold climates because they ramp up and down on a continuum. And that's how they get higher coefficient of performances and meet the ratings that they need to in order to qualify for that heat pump tax credit. Now, one thing to consider when getting a cold climate heat pump, when you're looking at a dual fuel application, which is when you're pairing it with a furnace and a heat pump as your primary source of heat, and then your furnace is your backup heat on the coldest nights, is that a lot of times people may be due to replace their air conditioner, but they just replaced their furnace and they didn't replace the air conditioner at the same time. And so you may be in a situation or you need to replace your air conditioner, but you don't need to replace your furnace because you just replaced it. And unfortunately, a lot of the high efficiency heat pumps out there require you to replace the furnace at the same time in order to be a communicating inverter driven heat pump. However, there is an exception to this, and this is a product made by Mitsubishi called the IntelliHeat. And the Mitsubishi IntelliHeat system actually will pair with any brand of furnace. And so it doesn't have to be a Mitsubishi or any particular brand of furnace. And it can integrate directly and you can get an inverter driven heat pump that also qualifies as a cold climate heat pump. Works great. I think the Hyperheat, the H2I heat pump heats all the way down to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. So it, it is a very high performance cold climate heat pump that works great year round. It never really ever gets below negative 22 Fahrenheit in our market, at least in, in Denver. It certainly doesn't in other places like, you know, Salt Lake City either. I think it rarely gets that cold. But the bottom line is that, that is a great solution for people that are maybe looking to get a high efficiency heat pump, but don't 
really want to replace the furnace just in order to get the benefits of the heat pump if you have a newer furnace that you still want to use as part of your HVAC system. And that's where the Mitsubishi IntelliHeat is one of our favorite products that's out right now currently. And there are a lot of other manufacturers out there that have cold climate products that qualify. The big thing is that if something qualifies for a rebate or the tax credit, that tax credit means that it is qualified as a cold climate heat pump and therefore qualifies for that tax savings that you're going to get on the bill or your tax bill at the end of the year. The tax credit is in the amount of $2,000 and that $2,000 tax credit is based on the amount that you spent on installation as well as the cost of the equipment. So if you hire a contractor and they give you a quote for $7,000 or more, you can write off 30% of that up to a max of $2,000 for that. And I just say $7,000 or more because 30% of 7,000 is a little over two grand. And so basically you'd be able to max out the tax credit at that dollar amount. And so that's something to consider. But the bottom line is talk to a local contractor in your area because they're going to be able to give you the best feedback on whether or not a cold climate heat pump is something that works for your specific situation. And they're also going to be acquainted with the local rebates in your market as well. Because for example, in uh, Phoenix, we have access to a rebate that's $225 per ton, which is basically $1,100 for a five ton system for right at $900 for a four ton system. So if, and that's on the inverter driven product line in SRP rebate territory. So talking to a local contractor is something that's gonna give you the most relevant information for your particular situation. Just make sure if you do get a contractor that's not familiar with heat pumps, don't be scared to get a second opinion if they're telling you something that maybe is contradicting what I'm saying. Because we've had several, you know, subscribers share their experience where they had a hard time finding a contractor that would put out a heat pump in their area. And we gave them some feedback on where to find one and they found a, a contractor that worked on heat pumps and you know the other contractors who said hey heat pumps don't work in our climate they were actually just ignorant to the fact that they don't work on heat pumps personally that work in their climate and so they found someone that was able to provide them with a solution that met their needs and if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver Colorado or Phoenix Arizona you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free we come out for free for all first-time customers whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement and there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service so you can stay up to date when we start servicing your metro so we hope you enjoyed this content uh, please consider subscribing to the channel if you found this content helpful and make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm it is much appreciated in a free way that you can support the channel and right now there's a few videos popping up on the screen that talk about other types of heat pumps like we mentioned earlier in the video so make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already and we will catch you on the next episode